So, to do that, I want to draw your attention back to this graph. I should do it, I don't know if you ran out of time to do it, but um, we want to think about this because it has some implications for the second rooting. Okay? So y equals x to the 4. Now, I wonder if you have a picture of what this looks like in your mind. Before we draw it, I want to do some work with it. Okay? So if we were to find... Dude, the real thing's right here. Like it, no one. If we wanted to say, find the stationary points, okay, and determine their nature, here's what you might do. You would say the first derivative is equal to 4x cubed, right? So you would conclude from that, okay, that it looks like there's a stationary point at x equals 0, and correspondingly, y equals 0 as well. So at the origin, you've got a stationary point, okay? But then you want to um, determine its nature, okay? And we've just learned that we can use, we could test on either side, that would work. But we can use the second derivative, that'll be cool, and I, that'll be quicker in some cases, right? And this is one of the functions where as it gets, as you differentiate more, it gets simpler, because it's not a fraction, right? So cool, let's do this. Second derivative is just 12x squared. And then something weird is happening. So we can see that there's a stationary point at the origin, okay? But at the origin, what happens to the second derivative? Because hmm. we were thinking, okay, if it's a stationary point, it should be like concave up or concave down. And that will tell us if it's a max or a min, right? But something else is going on. At the origin, the second derivative is what? It's just zero, right? So what does that tell us? This tells us gradient. This tells us concavity. So this is saying there's no concavity at the origin. So what does this thing look like? Okay. Well, let me draw it for you. If you draw x squared before, you know, parabolas are fine. Okay. x to the 4, if you actually plot some points, what it looks like is very similar to x squared, but it's, um, it looks like it's put on a few pounds. Uh, because it's, it's at the bottom. It's really, really flat. And you can zoom in. And it doesn't just go down and... and lift off, okay? It actually seems to stay down there for a little while, or at least longer than x squared, okay? So what does that mean? You've got no concavity at the origin, okay? So what is this? It's not a point of inflection, is it? Because if you look at it, look at the whole thing, okay? How would you describe its concavity? Concave up, concave up, concave up, concave up, and then it's still concave up, okay? Um, yeah, that's right. It's, it's, there's no change in concavity. Okay? So even though we expect, you remember we looked at this, the second derivative is zero. So usually we would expect a point of inflection. Okay? But in this case, and you can see it by testing, it's not. Okay? That's why I was emphasizing yesterday, right? The turning point occurs when dy and dx changes sign. It's got to go from positive to negative, or negative to positive. Okay? A point of inflection occurs when the second derivative does the same. Okay? And here, there's no change. Okay? It just stays positive the whole way through. Okay? So now, 